Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another World of Warcraft video. I hope everyone's having an amazing day and an amazing night. I know I am. Uh, yesterday was my birthday. I am 29 years old, officially on this planet Earth. It's a, a blessing to be here, and much love to everybody. See the balloon? That's the proof. But it is the truth, though. Um, I had a good time with my mom and dad. We had a lot of nice food, and you know, just like a good time and good family bonding moment. Uh, I, I like to be to myself for my birthday, and I'm not really like a big clubber like I once was when I was younger, just going out and being a little wild and about. But don't worry, the club still comes online uh, at the Twitch TV. Hello, J Tello. Selfless plug. Much love to you. Wednesday. Uh, Saturdays and Sundays. Didn't stream yesterday because uh, too stuffed with food, but that's normally the schedule. However, though, um, before we continue today's video, check out the link below, though. Uh, Rested XP, your guide through all of Azeroth, especially with Phase 4 coming around the corner. Might as well use it. Check it out. Support the boy. Support the channel. And if anything, just subscribe and like. Much love to you. Papatello's happy either way. And to the Poland Spring. Let's get the re remaining uh, sippage here. That was, that was good, but a little disappointing. Uh, don't worry. We're on time crisis. Reload. You know what I'm saying? However, though, settle down, lock it in. Don't get shot in Minecraft. Let's continue with the video, all right? So, it looks like in uh, Phase 4 PTR, Kel Sarar has been basically addressed for a change within Season of Discovery. Now, not the weapon properties itself or the stats, but more for who can use it. And it seems like rogues now are going to be able to wield this iconic weapon that was only once be able to use from Paladins and Warriors and get access to the epic questline for the Forging of Kel Sarar. So it seems like rogues are going to have the chance to use this weapon. Uh, now, whether this is for tanking rogues or DPS rogues, I'm sure you guys will have that debate. However, though, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and what you guys think about that. Another thing we're going to be addressing here is about the new famous sword that we talked about the other day in Phase 4 PTR for the Dreadblade of the Destructor. Now, as we continue with this portion of the video, what I want to talk about is this because I want to know what's exactly going on. Now, we know Dreadblades of the Destructor has some crazy stats on it and it gives you, you know, a whopping basically uh, 150 or, or sorry, 125 strength and stamina reduced by 50. These are stats for two minutes, which is absolutely absolutely insane uh but my curiosity goes to this what exactly are we going to be fighting within this dungeon what exactly are we going to be fighting in general is it going to lead to you know a particular mob that drops this as they mentioned dithorius the seeker is he going to drop this weapon is this glive going to be still split in half exactly how are we going to be going about demon fall canyon and is this is going to be an instance um you know area or portal we go through where the meta warlocks basically got their metamorphosis rune or you know near the area where the paladins got the you know their divine storm rune exactly how are we going to go about this weapon because i'm very curious to see what is going to happen overall I, I think there's going to be you know a couple bosses of what they listed supposedly within this dungeon area um i really hope it's a cool little spot you know where there's you know interesting you know trash mobs fun little mechanics nothing too crazy and overall some cool lore to add to the addition to the fight over you know the slaying of manor off with you know hell scream and thrall and this would be really interesting to see what happens overall in terms of what they add to the lore of things overall though i'm really hoping this dungeon is actually fun and it's not something that is just reused asset of uh an instance thing like nightmare incursions and it's just a recoloring and it's the same exact area i hope that's not the case however though if that is the case i really hope at least the fights are good you know and if they're not then obviously we'll have our talk in the future about uh the basically letdown of this new dungeon within season of discovery overall though we'll see what happens there has been promised to you know basically from the data mines to be different types of reward drops so i'm looking forward to see what we're going to go from from there overall i'm going to keep my expectations low not have my hopes up extremely high and prepare for any type of you know basically disappointment if it happens within you know the phase four ptr now first season discovery uh development changes with druids and shamans for class changes so it seems like druids survival instinct now also increases the healing done by your spells by 20 percent while active shamans earth shield is no longer exclusive with lightning shield riptide healing can now trigger the power surge rune when used the chance of static shock to trigger when using a two-hand weapon is now 12 percent and remains six percent with one-handed weapons and shield mastery additional benefit from defense now triggers off of any shock spell and not just flame shock shield mastery defense benefit change from ap to sp 
an additional threat caused by Way of Earth has been uh, basically increased to 65% up from 50%. So for my shamans and my druids out there, what do you guys think of this? Do you guys think this is more of a W change? Is it an L change? Let me know. And I've heard shamans say that there is more of this, from what I've heard, just rumors, that this hurts them a little bit more beneficial, which I came to be surprised about from hearing that. So let me know your thoughts below if this is actually some good changes or not, because I'm really curious about that and making sure those rumors weren't true. However, for the warriors and the warrior brethren over there, I hope everyone's doing good and drinking the finest of ales. Much love to you. However, for the warriors, Raging Blow has been adjusted. The damage of Raging Blow is increased to 100% weapon damage. Raging Blow cooldown is reduced by one second and when used uh, another melee ability while enraged. Uh, consumed by Rage also makes Whirlwind Strike with both equipped weapons while enraged. Um, and Blood Surge now causes Slam to hit with both equipped melee weapons. And Endless Rage Rune has been moved to the head slot. So for my warriors, what do you guys think about these other abilities uh, basically synergizing with others and also increasing your damage and having runes change to other areas? Let me know your thoughts in comments below whether you guys think this is a WL as well. Ah, for the thing I wanted to discuss about next because I basically almost hit the screen the other day looking at this because I was a little concerned if they were basically removing Vindicator the other day when I was going over the patch notes, but it seems like they didn't remove it. They basically just moved it to Vindication, which led me to think about a whole thing the other night, and I had some discussions with Paladins in the Discord, and we were going on about talking about what's actually going on, um, and basically this leading to my thoughts here, so I'll bring you back to the screen right now. So... Vindication, it got basically reduced its overall ability to uh, give AP by 70, 140, 210 to reduce the target's AP, and then grants only up to 10% and a max, which I was like, oh, so they're nerfing it. But then I noticed they removed it and they put shock and awe. So I was like, oh, so wait a second, what's going on here? So they added shock and awe, which more of is a shock and in holy style paladin ability. You get 100% of your intellect of spell damage for one minute when you cast holy shock. But I noticed in the cross line that it's still 5% and it goes up to 15%, which is 30 uh, second duration of vindication. So I had to go over to the talent calculator to see what was going on. And I noticed on vindication that they added it the Vindicator ability to Vindication, but it is still um, 30 seconds for 15% AP. This is also confirmed with OGB, who did a test with his Paladin video over there on YouTube. Check him out. He's a great Paladin. And he tested post-nerf that it is still 15% uh, for 30 seconds. This might get pushed down to 10%. There is that, per, uh, you know, value of a percentage that they will do that. There's that, you know, chance. Um, but overall, at the moment, post-nerf PTR, 15% AP for 30 seconds. Now, here's where something that start I started to think about because my brain started, like, brainstorming heavily, and I was like, oh, shit. Like, they just did something that led me to a whole can of worms that I'm about to open and discuss about today. Whether people, uh, you know, agree or disagree, it is what it is. Like, I'm, I just want to talk about these things. I think they're cool. You know, I like talking. And I think it's fun, you know, discussing stuff that I enjoy, right? So, I was like, all right, if they're able to change Vindication, a talent that was always a PvE ability, never in its history of usage in Classic WoW has Vindication been used for PvE whatsoever. It is a PvP talent. It shines in PvP, especially if you're stacking that and eye for an eye, and you know you're using that against you know casters, range, etc. Right? Um, or melee, whatever. Right? However you're playing your paladin, etc. It's just a really good PvP talent, right? And now they're giving it PvE life. So this led me to think, well, can they do that for other talents as well? If they have the ability to work on the talent end, just like when I was talking about in that long video I did, my previous one, the hour long one, almost an hour long, it was like 55 minutes, I was exhausted. Unbelievable. I, uh, I was like talking about hunters and they started reworking hunters everywhere on their talents, on their tree and like different runes and abilities. And I was like, if they're trying to benefit multiple play styles, I really like that. I like the concept of like answering the wishes of different uh, fantasies of players that want to play the, the class they love to play in a specific way that they enjoy the most and trying to fulfill all those roles. And I think that's awesome. Um, but at the same time, it leads to people always yearning for more for a specific spec. It, that always happens, right? And I think the answer lies within the talent tree of the game itself. And I think, honestly, if we start to add more descriptors or descriptions to talents in the game that deserve it. Sorry, my nose is a little itchy right now. I don't know what's happening. It was itchy the other day, itchy now. Maybe I'm just getting lucky. A lot of good luck's coming. However, oh, and I got to tell you something at the end, too. You're going to love this. 
Um, but overall, though, I'm very curious to see where they're going to go about of doing any further changes for any other things that are a little bit more on the weaker side. So here's a mere example, and I'm not going to say that it's a bad talent, right? Because I've used it in the past when playing, you know, uh, Holy uh, Wreck or just, you know, trying out Chocodim. And Unyielding Faith. Unyielding Faith has a 10% to basically resist fears and disorients. Now, this is something that normally you would want to probably go down in the holy tree and go for. You would want to get other holy abilities to try to benefit down to the tree. You know, getting down to your divine favor, getting to, you know, maybe last in judgment if you're going for that. Uh, holy power, holy shock, depending. There's a lot of ways of playing if you're playing more for PvE or PvP, right? Two different ways, I would say, mainly, right? But in general, though, Unyielding Faith is like kind of like on the meh end, right? Uh... But then I look at Inspiration Exemplar, and I'm like, well, this is similar to Tremor Totem, right? You know, what shamans basically have, right? And I noticed, like, you know, this was something that wasn't super heavily used in the early phases, right? It wasn't something that was, like, super popular until, in my opinion, Sunken Temple into uh, Jamal the Prophet, where Paladins... Well, I had a Holy Paladin in my read where you, they had to use this during that fight in particular, not against Odum, you know, the other one who does basically the Paladin, who does the Divine Storm shit. No, just against Jamal. And it helped out, for sure. 100%. But I'm wondering, what is the eventual chance, if there is a chance, that we might start tying different runes into certain talents that need further improvements? Or fix different talents that need other improvements? Or extend the descriptions of those talents by via maybe passive books? I know you guys remember passive books in Phase 2 when we used to go through all of Scarlet Monastery. And have a good time, you know, staying in groups. It promoted healthy game, uh, you know, gameplay with game groups and going through the world of different dungeons and getting different, you know, you know, basically uh, items for our class and you know, getting those books to help, you know, give us that, you know, further buff to things that we needed assistance for. You know, I know for Paladin, for like, you know, the enhanced blessings, and especially, you know, for Warlocks, for getting their portals, right? This is just mere examples, right? I know there were certain mages, you know, better intellect and better fortitude for priests, etc., right? Um, but overall, though, what I'm getting at is this. I think the answers genuinely lie within the talents, and I think to further increase the better efficiency of the game is to work at your main core of talents you already have in the game. I think passive books is a genius way, which they already have, you know, like there's already passive books in retail, like a lot of passive things that happen overall. But I think passive books is a genius way in comparison of just adding only more runes. I don't think adding more and more and more runes to the game is what people want because then you get them overwhelmed. You get them feel like, holy shit, I'm swamped and having to choose this. I wish that went there. I wish that was that. Instead of just doing that, maybe look at the talents themselves add some of the juice from from some of the runes that you have and start synergizing start combining things start trying to test the water with things i mean that's what the reason why also why we have this ptr is to try different things to see what result we get right um for the for either the best or the worst you know the shit happens sometimes but I truthfully think, you know, this is something that is really special here. And now I'm going to show you something here, too, and just to further my point, right? And I'm not saying my point's like 100% right or, you know, I'm, I'm not saying I'm perfect. But I'm just saying, you know, this is what I'm talking about. This is the stuff that goes through my mind. You know, in the original Vanilla, we have, you know, December 6th of here, 2004, right? This was the Paladin kit. And you can see it's like all over the place. It's like, what the fuck is going on? I never played Paladin at this point. This was not my days of playing Paladin. I played more Warrior back in the day, you know? But never at this point was I a Paladin guy. Um, and I'm like, what the hell is Repentance doing here? Blessing the Kings is doing over here. You know, we, the, you know, Divine Strength is down here. Like, what is going on? Uh, but overall, though, a lot of things changed, right? And then they made another patch where, you know, now it's the kit that we see nowadays. And it's been like that for a long, long time in Classic, you know? Now, they did the two steps already. And I think, in my opinion, the third step is by editing m majority of the other talents, leaving them as they are, but fixing them and synergizing uh, so they correlate better with one another. And I think, honestly, that is the future of World of Warcraft, of fixing the talents, adding better descriptions, introducing, uh, you know, passive books for the better, you know, to see what it can improve and go from there. Like, another example that I will discuss with you guys as well 
is uh, improved seal of the righteousness. Improved seal of the righteousness is something that you know basically increases your damage done with your seal of the righteousness and judgment of righteousness by 15%. But what it doesn't tell you is that it also it correlates with seal of martyrdom. That it actually ties within seal of martyrdom and it is it's something that is not described on the talent list itself. It's not written there. And I think that's I don't I, I don't know why that's not a thing. I don't know what dev decided to not add a description towards the hidden effect of seal of martyrdom also benefiting off of improved seal of righteousness so i think there needs to be some type of thing done here to further describe it better to the player in the tooltips so they can understand what's going on and also increase the talents that need fixing or at least adjust them and further you know improve the fantasy of the class overall i think that a lot can be done here you can even if you even want to look on the red side of things too and repentance repentance is a heavy heavy pvp ability everybody knows this repentance is amazing in pvp but in pve it's like whatever you would typically use this for like maybe like a a dungeon boss that's a humanoid or whatever and like you know maybe you could just like put you know sleep somebody for or meditate them for like you know six seconds but overall though this is a great ability in pvp could it have potential pve usage with a different description or something added to it who knows but one more thing i will talk about before i basically you know end the video is seal of command now this is where you know it's debatable with a lot of people here because seal of command is something that's been around for quite a long time and everybody knows once you hit around the 20s when you get with a paladin seal of command is where you know things start becoming better you know in event you know back in the day when you start twisting or just simply judging your command however seal of command is an iconic ability for a paladin and i really think that seal of command is one of the only seals that haven't seen any type of you know changes through all of basically season of discovery we've seen you know uh, improves uh, seal of the righteousness obviously that's a you know a thing that's naturally already on the holy talent kit we have you know um seal of martyrdom which went through its many changes with its mana battery going up and down whether we're going to be like shamans whether we're pumping more mana out like shamans you know to our group and our raid parties i know this happened many times with me in sunken temple i remember that one week when it went crazy and we had like 133 percent or some shit like that and it was fucking insane and then they nerfed it down and then also the fact that it correlates with you know improved seal of the righteousness and it just doesn't describe it right but overall though um seal of command is something that has not seen anything improved or in, or something that adds an improved seal of command now i'm not saying you need to change seal of command at its core i'm not saying that uh, i think seal of command at, as an ability is good it's really good right we can agree on that i'm just saying i think it would be cool to possibly see seal of command either synergize with other abilities that are on the lacking end such as divine storm possibly crusader strike not saying crusader strikes lacking but if it's synergized with crusader strike or divine storm with seal of command we could possibly see the likelihood of more two-hand play style come back into the game for slow two-hand play style that is something that a lot of paladins enjoy and i think this is where we're at right now as paladins where people like the fast play style of like exo spamming because now they just revived art of war in the ptr and exo spamming is going to be a thing i think purifying power exo spam art of war if no changes are coming and then with the changes that and the, you know the weapons that we're going to be looking forward to fast hand weapons like typhoon you know uh with a 2.0 a swing speed um that weapon will dominate in pve and you will look for palins will be looking towards that with the big burst that they do already and with the wings i think this could be you know crazy you know fast two-hand play style potential but the two-handers over here and especially stuff that i'm excited for like redefined arcanite reaper stuff like that i don't know how much that will do in comparison to the fast two-hand raft style play style so i really hope that we start to take a look at working and improving core talents to help out things that need assistance is what i'm getting at um and i'm not trying to like you know sugarcoat it or anything like that like that that's that's really fucking it is helping out those play styles work with each other helping out other classes play styles work with each other and try to make better synergy of things overall and i'll leave it at that because i don't want to like keep going on a massive rant and you know talking about paladin things and bore you guys all day however though much love to you i hope you're locked in as always uh phase four we are officially 10 days away i cannot wait i'm looking forward to it 
I'm very excited. It's going to be a blast. And I hope to see all you guys out there on the battlefield, on the battlegrounds, in AV, open world, um, PvE, PvP, whatever. And uh, we're going to be doing a lot of recruiting ourselves in our guild to get people involved on the Living Flame side uh, to get everything up and running. However, though, I'm really excited. And that's really about it. Let me know your thoughts and comments below on my on my opinions, you know, on whether you think they're dog shit. It's fine, you know. Uh, I'm not here to please everyone, but uh, at the end of the day, I enjoy what I do. And uh, I enjoy talking to you. So much love to you guys. Happy birthday to me, by the way. Much love. And uh, we'll just go from there. Keep on keeping on, amigos. Shine on. And I'll, I'll catch you on the next one. Brought to you by Febreze. Eliminates all orders when you're taking a massive dookie and it's a number three and you're pushing like it's the last push you'll ever do and you're just looking at God. You're like, please, God, help me. Ah!